get unstuck, get going, and get where you want to go in 2013. If we truly want to get unstuck, we have to understand, first and foremost, why we're stuck. Many of us uh, have many reasons. There are many reasons why we could be stuck. It could be because of a lack of vision. It could be because of a lack of knowledge, wisdom, and spiritual understanding to make decisions. It could be because we're afraid or we're worried or we're shameful about something that we've done or something we were supposed to do but didn't get around to it. Uh, or we are uh, guilty of avoiding, avoidance, where we just don't have the uh, strength to confront those things in life that we really need to confront. But I want to tell you that the number one reason, the number one reason why we, uh, why we are stuck is because of a lack of order. I guess really what I'm saying is that there is a lack of strategy to gain order. So therefore we can't move because we don't know how to. So in Overcome Procrastination God's Way, we find these words. The seven procrastinating tribes remained at Shiloh because they did not have a strategy to help them to gain, regain, or maintain order. We know this because Joshua gave them specific instructions to describe and divide the land of no lack that had already been conquered for them. Those instructions to gain order were critical. They were critical because he knew that without order, they would be forced to live beneath the standard of life that God had ordained for them. For example, Joshua must have known that having a lack of order will cause continued procrastination. That's why he asked them, how long, how long, how long were they going to be slack to go and possess the land? Then he developed a strategy to get them going. We are no different. Without order in our lives, we too will procrastinate and our affairs, well, they will continue to back up and stack up against us. Therefore, we too need a strategy to gain order so that we can get moving. Let's get going. Let's get moving forward towards those things that God has ordained for us, and that is the land of no lack. Many of us, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a, uh, a woman sitting at a desk with a whole bunch of papers and things and all kinds of things all around, around about her. Most of us in our lives live similar ways where we just have stuff all over the place. And you know, for the longest of my life, I've been trying to figure out why that is. Why is it that we have stuff all over the place? I, I would venture to say that many times it's for a number of reasons. But the main reason is because we just don't know how to gain order. And then things get out of whack. They stack up, they back up, we don't know what to do, and we just end up doing little or nothing. In fact, we end up just doing nothing, we just many times just walk away from it and just try to muddle and struggle and get through the best we can uh, to get the things done that are staring us in the face right now, assuming that we can find what we're looking for. <laughs> and what I've noticed is that the outside, our outer environment, is a direct reflection of our inner environment. Our inner environment is what drives order. It's not just the fact that we know how to stack a book on a shelf or we know where to put a, a piece of paper in a file. But it really is a matter of comprehensively, systemically, in our lives, knowing uh, how to manage all of the various areas of our lives. So therefore, we can take care of filing when it's time to file, but at the same time, when it's time to really do something else, like go shopping, or spend time with our loved ones, or get up and pray, or read the Word of God, or even pursue our dreams, all of those things are done because we know how to. In other words, our outer environment becomes a direct reflection of the fact that we have order on the inside of our lives, inside of our minds. We know how to do it. We think through it. You know, we've got a, a system. And at the same time, in our souls, it is all well with our souls. Our souls become uh, magnified. They become, uh, they become satisfied because we now have a system, a strategy, a way to do the things all of the things that need to be done. Now, we all need to get going. Get going. We want to get unstuck and we want to get going. In order to get going, we all have at least seven areas of our lives, at least seven areas of our lives to manage. But the truth is, we don't because we don't know how to. We just don't know how to do it. 
We don't know how to pull together all of those things, our spiritual desires, our desires to spend time with our family and friends, uh, our desires for our house and home to keep our houses clean and uh, projects taken care of, you know, our financial desires to keep all of our bills paid on time, let the church say amen, you know what I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking to, to be able to pay our bills on time and at the same time save and invest and have good insurance and at the same time be able to uh, have something uh, put away for retirement as well as to be able to do our estate planning so that when we die, and we're all going to die, but at least when we die, our houses are in order and we're able to pass along all of our assets to our children and to our children's children so that they too, so that they will be able to have a different starting place than where we started from. Uh, I don't know about you, but I started from scratch. In fact, I'm still scratching. I'm still trying to get there. I'm still trying to get where God uh, has ordained for me to get to. That place, that land of no lack. It's time out for being slack. It's now time to get to the land of no lack. And that's why I've, here, I've come here today to talk to you. I've come here today to talk to you about how can we get from lack to, from slack to no lack. That's a very distinct uh, shift in paradigms. That's a distinct way that we can do things differently. And so the way that we can do that is by gaining order. We all have seven areas that we need to get together. We need to pull it all together. You know, come on, get yourself together. Get your mind, your soul, your body. You know, bring everything into one so that all things work together for the good to them who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. So we are called according to God's purpose. We are the called. You are the called. We are the called according to God's purpose. And so therefore, let us now begin to walk in our purpose and to get to that place to do those things that God has ordained. And I assure you that what God has for us, what God has for you, it is for you. Uh, so we definitely don't want to stay stuck in our lives. We want to move forward. We want to go forward toward all of the things that God has for us. Now, the way that we do that is to break each area of our lives down into seven action steps. And we will begin, then we will begin to gain, regain, and then maintain order in our lives in approximately seven months. So we can do this. You can do this. Let me just say this. In, on page 72 of Overcome Procrastination God's Way, it says, therefore, Joshua suggested that they assess the whole situation and then break it down into achievable, manageable parts. We should do likewise. We should consider Joshua's plan for the seven procrastinating tribes and implement it in our lives. In order to implement Joshua's 777 plan, we need to assess our lives as a whole, not just do a little bit here, not just do a little bit there, not just have a to-do list, but we need to break our lives comprehensively down into one comprehensive whole and then break them down into achievable, manageable parts. If we follow these steps, it should take about seven months to start seeing some substantive results. It took me about seven months to break some bad old habits to, and to establish some new ones, and I mean some good ones, some ones that actually have caused me to be able to see the, see the other side of life. Instead of living on the side of living presently and painfully in the past, by implementing Joshua's 777 plan, I've been able to live presently, progressively, and peacefully in the future. There's a green arrow that's pointing towards the future. And what gets us there is by gaining order in every area of our lives. It took me about seven months to break those bad habits, and it took me about seven months to get some new ones. And then it took me about, listen, it took me about actually two years. It took me seven years to write the book. But it took me two years after implementing Joshua's strategy. It took me two years to reach the shifting point from living presently in the past to living presently, peacefully, progressively in the future. In fact, up to the time of the writing of this book, which was not that long ago, I am still working it out and will continue to follow the plan because I feel out of sorts when I don't. It has become a way of life for me and it has, become, it has brought some structure and order to the way I do things. It works for me. It works for me and I hope that it works for you. Order. Order in our lives. Order in our lives. The effects of order. The effects of order. Order is that thing that makes the difference between going backwards and going forwards. When we don't have order in our lives, we are stuck 
We're stuck in the same place. We're not going anywhere. We are just mocking time, marching in one place, and many of us are actually going around in circles, around and around and around and around in circles. Others of us are just simply going backwards. We're not getting anywhere. We're going backwards. We take two steps up, we take one step up, and go three or four steps back. Why? Because we don't have order in our lives. Or our current, our current obligations become past due. The things that we need to do right now, because we haven't gotten around to gaining order in our lives, those things become, things become past due obligations. And the things that really are past due, oh, you know what I'm talking about, the things that you haven't done in a year or two years, the things you haven't taken care of in five years, the things that are still untaken care of are still untaken care of. And they are critical at this point. Many times they become critical or they become expensive and they become things that cause us to have more stress and to be all pressured in our lives. And overall, the quality of our lives, it begins to diminish. And then life itself begins to spiral downward. I assure you that that is not what God ordains for our lives. God does not ordain that our lives will go downward. Instead, God ordains that our lives will go upward. So we're going to continue to go upward. And as we go upward, we're going to go forward. And as we go forward, we're going to begin to achieve those things, all of those things, all of the things that have been put on your heart and what God has ordained for you, all of those things will get accomplished. I know. Uh, maybe you want to write a book. Maybe you want to start a business. Perhaps God has put it on your heart to go back to school. You want to get your master's. You want to get your bachelor's or you want to get a doctorate, whatever it is. Uh, with order, you can take care of the things of the past, get that done, take care of the things of the present, uh, and manage that well. And then over a course of time, you can begin to proceed into the future. The future, not the, not the past, not just muddling through the present, but entering into the future pleasantly and peacefully progressively, powerfully, doing all of the things that God has ordained for you. And then you'll start accomplishing your long-term goals. Oh, you know those things you keep, you know, you say every year in your New Year's resolutions, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go there. But we never really get around to it. In fact, our New Year's resolutions become, res they become uh, obsolete by about March 15th or maybe even before then. We don't get around to even putting any effort towards accomplishing the things that we want to accomplish. It's now December 1st, 2012. And the question becomes, have you actually, have you done what you said you were going to do on December 1st, 2011? And so therefore we need to, we need to shift the paradigm as we stand at the threshold of entering into a new season, into a new day, into a new year, into a new opportunity to be able to do the things that God has called us to do. It's time to move forward. It's time to get unstuck so that we can get where we want to go. Not just in 2013, but in 2014, 2020, and 2050, whatever, however long you live, so that we can just continue to achieve and to give God the glory for all that he has done through us. We'll be able to realize our dreams and at the same time have peace of mind. We can have effective, e efficient, and a balanced life. We can dig out from that stack of stuff and at the same time we can move forward in managing the present and living well in the future. And it is all about living well in the future. Now, in order to get going, the first step that we can do is we need to determine the seven main areas of our lives. Now, we've already talked about that. There are seven main areas in our lives. The first area is our spiritual desires. We all have spiritual desires. We need to get up and pray. We need to read the Word of God. We need to worship. We need to go to Bible study. They're all the things that we say we're going to do, but we don't ever get around to it or we don't do it well. We just kind of stumble, and that becomes second or becomes last in, in our list of things to do. And by the time we get in the house, we're tired or we're not all, we don't have things all ordered, so we get up late in the morning, and therefore we don't actually do it because we're just trying to get to work or do whatever we need to do that day so somehow God gets put on the back, the back burner or up on the shelf. So we need to determine our spiritual desires. What do we have going on? What do we have going on in our, in our spiritual lives? We need to investigate that first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So we need to just seek him first. And if we're not doing that, then we really can't, we can't really question why we are still stuck. We're still stuck because we're not seeking the Lord, and we're not seeking the Lord because we're stuck. So it becomes a catch-22, downward spiraling situation. And at some point in time, we need to break that cycle. We need to break the cycle. We need to 
at some point in time break the back of slack and begin to do things in the way that God has ordained for our lives. And when we do, we'll find that we will start achieving those things that God has for us. What God has for you, it is for you. And what God has for me and for all of us, it is for all of us. The second area of our life, of our lives is our, uh, our desires for family and friends. How many times have you said, I'm, I want to spend more time with my mom or my dad, or I want to spend more time with my wife or my children, or you know, spend more time with, a, with an elderly grandparent, or just a friend, or a god sister, a god brother, you know, an aunt or an uncle, just someone that you just haven't been able to just spend that much time with. Well, one thing I've learned is that time is the one thing we can't get back. We can't get time back. So as we begin to move forward in our lives, we've got to use our time wisely so that we can really spend time with those that really mean the most to us. And at the end of the day, if you ask me, there is nothing more important than spending time with God and spending time with those whom you love. And when you do, then you find that the overall quality of life itself gets better. In fact, it doesn't even matter if we don't have any money. If we've got love, we don't even need money. You know, because it's that love. Love is the thing. Love is the thing. It, it, love covers a multitude of everything. And so we, when we have that and we're sowing into our families, into the Lord, when we are moving forward in the things of God and moving forward and spending time with those that really matter, then the quality of our lives, it will improve. It will get better. In fact, our lives will be better than it ever has been before. Then we look around, we need to take care of desires in our house and home. Projects in the house, making sure that everything is locked down with, with regards to making sure that the house is clean and things are done and things are being accomplished and taken care of in the right way and in a timely way. So we definitely need to make sure that we are taking care of our house and home desires, the desires for our house and home. Maybe we want to move from paying rent to paying a mortgage. Or maybe we want to pay off our mortgage. Maybe we just want to move forward. Maybe we want to move or just whatever it is that God has put on your heart. If we don't have order, those things won't come to pass. But with order, I assure you that everything that we've got going on in our lives, it's going to come to pass because order is the thing that God uses. In fact, in Genesis 1, that's what God did in order to bring everything together. The earth was void and without form. And as it was void and without form, God just brought everything together, all of the pieces, all of the fragments of matter. He brought everything together into one whole. And he said, let there be, and it was. So he, what it was, was order. He brought order to the things that were disorderly. He did it one step at a time. It was one thing, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing we know, everything was working together for the good. And everything would work together for the good for us. To those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose, everything will work together for the good. So it's all good. Amen. It's all good with order. Order makes it all good. And then we have to make sure that our finances are taken care of. We have to make sure our bills are paid. We have a budget. Make sure that we have our uh, insurance paid up and our car insurance and our just everything financial. You know, maybe we want to increase our income. Maybe we want to decrease our debt. Maybe we want to get our credit better. Amen. Somebody say amen. We need to get our credit together. <laughs> we need to get it together. So, you know, we need to. But order is the thing that will bring all of those things together. Also, we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. That's the one thing. Be besides not taking care of our relationship with God, we don't take care of ourselves. We don't take care of ourselves. And so, you know, what good is anything else if we don't take care of ourselves? We don't take care of our health. We don't take care of our, our bodies, our rest, our relaxation. We, we need to have some fun. You know, in the kingdom of God, I tell you, we are some serious people. We do a lot of serious stuff. Hey, man, we go and go and go for God. And, you know, then we just, we just keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. But the thing is, at least the Energizer Bunny had a battery. <laughs> we don't have a battery. And we just have to make sure that we are making sure that our lives are running smoothly and that we are doing things in God's orderly way. God even tells us to be decent, to do things decently and in order. So we've got to make sure that we're doing everything decently, making sure that we're doing everything in an orderly kind of way, and taking care of ourselves. Going to the doctor, African-American African -American men, we need to go to the doctor. My wife is looking at me like, yeah, right, when was the last time you went? <laughs> we need to go to the dentist. We need to, we need to go. We need to take care of our bodies, make sure our hearts, our diets, we're eating well. Step away from the table some. Step away from the salt some. Step away from the fried food some. We need to step away from those things that are bringing detriment to ourselves. But a lot of times we don't do that. Why? 
because we don't have order in our lives. We don't have order in our lives, so we end up going to McDonald's or wherever else that has a high sodium, high cholesterol diet. And we end up, I know, there's somebody in the back saying, that's me, that's me, <laughs> that's me. We just keep moving and going and going and going. We just, you know, put something in the driveway as we're driving. We got a chicken wing in our, you know, <laughs> we just, because we try to get to the next space. But if we had order, we would be able to sit down and think about what we're eating and think about getting rest and think about getting eight hours of sleep and, you know, and waking up well and being well in our lives and in our souls. So that's really, uh, that's really important. And then also our work and our, or school. Maybe you're in work, maybe you're in school, or maybe you're working. Maybe you're working three jobs. You know, maybe you're working one job that's just, it's the equivalent to five jobs. You know, it's just, you gotta just work, all you do is work. You know, and that's out of order. It's out of order because what happens is we are so spent by the end of the day. And it's, there's a cumulative effect. What happens is it just keeps going and going and going and going. And the next thing, we don't, we don't even really realize how much detriment we've done to our minds, our souls, and our bodies. And, and we end up uh, not spending the quality time with our wives, our husbands, our children, our family members, or even spending good quality time with ourselves. You know, just getting our own thoughts together. We don't do it. We don't do it because our lives are out of order. But we can bring it together. Now, of all the things that are not in order, it is the fact that we're not pursuing our future pursuits. There are so many, you know, and I hate to say it like this, but as a pastor, I end up going to a lot of funerals, and, you know, I, I guess you could say that, you know, that's part of the business, if you want to call it a business, but that's part of the ministry. That's part of what we do. And it always really amazes me because, you know, many times there are a lot of accolades. There are a lot of accolades that people say when, when they eulogize, but... One thing that goes unsaid many times are the things that go undone, the things that never got done. That song, that book, that song, that, that, that CD, that, that, uh, that ministry that never got birthed, that book that never got written. All of those things never get done because we never get around to it. But that is not what God ordains for our lives. God ordains that we would just, that we would just have life and have it more abundantly and that we would be able to just do all of the things that he has ordained for us. I always tell people in my congregation, I don't want to get to heaven and find out what I could have been. I want to get to heaven and I want God to say, good and good and jo uh, job, well done, that good and faithful servant. I want to get there and find out, you know, that I did everything that God ordained for me to do. So let's get, let's start moving forward. Let's get this thing together because we don't want to get there and find out what we could have done here. So let's get everything we could do, get done here. Let's get it done. Amen. So we've got spiritual desires, desires for our family and friends, desire for house and home, and desires for our finances, personal care desires, our work and school desires, and our future pursuits. Amen. We can get it done. We can do this. Amen. You can do this. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. The second step is we need to break everything, each area, each area of life down into seven action steps. Action step number one is we need to determine the overall tasks for each of the seven areas of our lives, spiritual, uh, family, house and home, our financial, our work, school, everything, our future pursuits, we need to break down each area of life into overall tasks for each area of life. Let me give you an example. For our house and home, I'm just, just, let me use that one because all of us have, so hopefully all of us have somewhere to live, amen. Hopefully we all have somewhere to live, wherever you might be living, a house, a home, an apartment, or room or wherever you might be living, that's not the issue. All of us hopefully are living somewhere, even though I know that there are many people in the world who don't have homes. So I don't want to be uh, not recognizing that. I don't, I don't want to you know, be callous towards that. But for those of us who are able to live in a house, praise the Lord, all of us have a house or home that we need to keep clean. Amen. <laughs> You know, it, look, it ain't got to be beautiful, but it can be clean. <laughs> right? You know, as, as my wife always tells me, Shelly always tells me, you know, that one of the lessons that her grandmother, who recently passed away, said, you know, look, you ain't got to have the best, but you can have the cleanest. Amen. So, you know, praise the Lord, you know, for, you know, for the wisdom, you know, that comes from our elders. And it's so true. So we can, we, okay, let's just use that as an example. We can clean, we need to clean our houses and overall, whatever that entails, and we need to, let's say, clean our clothes. We need to have clean clothes. You know, clean socks, amen. You know, no double, no repeats, amen. Come on, somebody say amen. No repeats, no, <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't need to have a, a, a replay of our socks and, you know, of our shirts and things that we wear. We want to have clean clothes. We want to take our clothes to cleaners. We want to have time to, you know, do our laundry, to wash our clothes. Uh, and 
And then the second step after that, overall, and there are many more steps, but I'm just give you two. The second step after that is to determine what we need to do in order to accomplish that overall task. So let's just take cleaning the house. Cleaning the house, we're going to need to vacuum, we're going to need to scrub, we're going to need to wax, we're going to need to straighten, we're going to need to arrange or rearrange. Those things, all of those things are, they are action steps that fall underneath the overall task. Clean the house, and in cleaning the house, we need to vacuum. And also, we need to scrub, we need to wax, we need to straighten. So those are action steps for each overall task. Then the third action step is to determine how often we do each step. So we need to clean the house, we need to vacuum. How often do we need to vacuum? Well, uh, Shelly, she likes to vacuum every day. Amen. But I'll say weekly, amen. I'll say at least weekly, we need to vacuum our houses if we have carpet. So, okay, so the overall task is cleaning the house. And then the, uh, you know, the action steps are vacuuming and scrubbing. So we need to vacuum weekly. And let's say we need to do our dry cleaning bi-weekly every other Tuesday or so. So we need to, you know, just set, begin to set some parameters around how often we're doing things and when we do things and what we need to do. The fourth step, the fourth action step is we need to determine what day or date we're going to do each action step. So we need to clean the house, we need to vacuum, we need to take our clothes to the cleaners. And we need to, uh, we need to do that weekly, but what day during the week? You know, for vacuuming, why don't we say let's do that on Saturday? So we're now determining when we're going to do what we need to do. So we do that on Saturday. How about dry cleaning? Well, you know, when we're out and about or going wherever, let's, let's start gathering our clothes on Monday night and let's take them to the cleaners on Tuesday. Every other Tuesday is if that's when you take them. So that means you've got the opportunity to now begin to get structure around when you're doing what you're doing. And it's not this big glob of stuff that all runs together because you don't really have any structure to when and how you do things. The fifth step is we need to determine how much time or money is going to take to perform each action step. So all right, so we need to clean the house. Let's just say we need to vacuum. Well, how long is it going to take us to vacuum? Because if we can figure out how long we need to do the vacuuming, then we can do that, let's say, in an hour. It'll take us an hour to vacuum. When we do that vacuuming with, within one hour, now we're begin, beginning to gain structure to our day. And we can figure out what we're going to be doing at certain times on certain weeks on certain days. And when we do that, then we can find time to do the other things that we need to do. Instead of like, you know how we do. It's like, okay, when I kind of feel like it, you know, I'm going to get around to it, or maybe not, or maybe I'm going to do it tomorrow, and we don't actually get around to it tomorrow, and then we end up not being able to breathe in the house because we haven't vacuumed. So, <laughs> so we need to just make sure that we are locking it down so that we can lock it down and get it done, and then move on to enjoy the rest of our lives. You know, within that hour, it's done, knock it out, get it done. I remember my mom used to always say, you know, I used to really, really, I tell you, I used to really, really uh, fight doing the dishes. We didn't have a, a dishwasher when I was growing up. I was the dishwasher. Me and my sister, we were the dishwashers. And I used to argue. I used to plead my case. I used to plead it like I was talking to the Supreme Court. I tell you, but Ma, but see, but you know, and I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it, and I would, you know. And what she would say is, look, man, if you would just knock it out, just plan when you're going to do it, just do it, knock it out, and you can go on to do what you want to do. I played the drums in high school, and, you know, I just, I just wanted to go play the drums all the time. That's what I did, you know, and I wanted to do that first. And she was like, no, man, knock out your stuff first. Do what you need to do first, and then you can do what you want to do. You know, so it's all about just gaining some structure, going from the broad to the specific, and when you get to that, to that place of specificity, then you can actually start making some moves in your life. So it's all about gaining structure. The next thing is we need to, we need to determine what and who can help us. What or who can help us to achieve what needs to be done. And see, that's the interesting thing because, you know, a lot of times we feel like we need to do it all by ourselves. But God has, has arranged and brought people into our lives and resources into our lives that makes it possible for us to be able to get some help. You know, we don't have to do everything all the time, but, you know, there are people, there are resources. Even just, you know, even let's say there's some software packages or there's some other resources that can help us to do things more effectively, more efficiently. Whatever those things are, whoever that is, whoever, maybe there's someone we need to delegate some stuff to. Maybe we can, we can hand some stuff off to, to someone else that's 
that are able to do that. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm one, and you know, I, I tell you a little story. When we first moved into our house, you know, we, we've got a lawn, and I, you know, I, the second thing beyond me not necessarily like liking to wash the dishes is to mow the lawn. I, I don't necessarily, I don't, you know, I, I like landscaping. I like to lay out, make sure my shrubs are all good and all that, but mowing the lawn is not one of my favorite things. You know, and, and I praise the Lord because when we first moved into our house, our next door neighbor is a landscaper. <laughs> praise the Lord, let the church say amen. We, God will provide, amen. He will provide, and he provided for us a landscaper who's right next door. So, you know, in, in terms of my list of things that need to be done, you know, I just call, I call the landscaper, and he gets it done. And he, in fact, we don't even have to call him. He just does it, you know, and he just builds us for it later. So, I mean, just only God could do that, and I tell you, that is an answered prayer. But there are other things, other resources, other people, you know, other things that can help us to live life more efficiently and more effectively so that we don't have to always be bogged down with every detail all of the time. We can break our lives down. We can get the resources. We can get the help. We can get all of the things that we need to get done done. There, there are just a lot of things. Now, God knows what we're dealing with. God knows we have seven areas, or maybe some of us have more than that. Actually, I have eight or nine areas of life. I've got a church, a small, very small church. Um, I'm the pastor. I'm the choir. I am the uh, deacon. I pray. I sing. I, you know, I, I dance if I need to. Amen. <laughs> Whatever I need to do, I clean. I sweep. I vacuum. I do everything that needs to be done. So that's another area in itself. By itself, is a lot. You know, and the other thing. So maybe you've got a lot of things going on in your life. And of course, you know, people do help out. But I mean. You know, it's kind of like having a newborn baby. You know, you, you, know, you just kind of hold your newborn baby close to you until you feel comfortable handing it off. And so we need to learn how to feel comfortable handing some things off. You know, we need to back away from some things that we just always do ourselves, you know, for whatever reason. Maybe we're just not comfortable with letting other people, you know, handle things that we handle. But when we do that, or when we just ask God for wisdom, for wisdom, you know, knowledge of his will and wisdom and spiritual understanding, then we begin to, you know, the Lord said that he will give us a more excellent way. He will give us a better way, a more excellent way of living. So God is, he's even concerned about every intricate detail of, of every area of our lives. And we need to just, you know, ask God, you know, how can we hand off some of the things that, that we do that are just so overwhelming to us? Then the final step is we need to begin to plot, plan, and prioritize. Plot, plan, prioritize. We need to group everything together. All right, so we've got seven areas of life, and with those seven areas of life, we need to begin to plot everything together. So what are we doing daily? You know, you know, we get up, we wash our, we wash, we make up our bed, we brush our teeth, we, you know, the things we do daily in the personal care area, we, you know, we drive to work, we go here, we do, the, we have certain things that we do daily in each area of our life. So let's group that together. What are we doing weekly? What are we doing on Mondays? What are we doing on Tuesdays, Wednesdays? And when we begin to get some structure in our lives, like how often we are doing things, then what we begin to find is that we have various things that we're doing in various areas every day in our lives. And because we've gained structure, we can actually get around to doing them. It's not about a to-do list, because I don't know about you, I don't ever do anything on my to-do list. You know, I may scratch a little something, something that's enjoyable off the list. But I very seldom do the most substantive things because it's just so overwhelming. There's so many things to do. But if we lock it down where we know exactly what we're doing on certain days, then it just becomes a habit. It becomes a routine, and therefore it's not as difficult for us to do. We just do it. And as a result, it gets done. And, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about getting things done. It's about shifting the paradigm from living painfully uh, in the past to living peacefully and progressively, powerfully in the future. The next thing we do, we need to do, is we need to begin to plan. Plot, that means we group everything together. Then we need to plan. Put it in your calendar. When, you know, everything else is just pie in the sky unless we put it in our calendar. We begin to schedule it, date it, it and get it in our minds. It becomes crystallized. It becomes, a, it becomes an obligation. It becomes a desire that we can achieve. But we don't put it down. We don't mark it down. We don't put it in a, in a calendar. Then it becomes optional. Amen. It becomes something we might do. But if we put it in our calendars, there is a greater likelihood that we're going to be able to accomplish and do everything that we have said that we're going to do that day. Put it in our calendars. Let me give you a little secret. Most of everyone that I know has either an iPhone, an Android, and now a new Galaxy, you know, I don't know, Star Trek, whatever it's called, I don't know. 
You know, everybody's got some kind of smartphone. That's to me, I've become, become, become to learn that is not all that smart. But at any rate, that's what they call it, smartphones. But what is smart is that there's usually a calendar. And you can put in that smartphone all of your tasks and obligations, all of the things that you need to do. And everything that you've been doing and manually writing down, it becomes automated. And even you can set a reminder, you put that reminder in, it buzzes you when it's time to, when you, when it's time to do what you said you're going to do. It will remind you that it's time to do it. Now, the other option is writing it manually, old school, writing it manually down on your calendar, you know, which is tedious, it's monotonous, but it is necessary if you don't use a smartphone. You know, it is necessary to, to have some type of, I don't know, they used to call them day planners or, you know, life planners, whatever it is, some kind of planner or calendar. Just, you know, maybe you just write it down on one of those old fashioned calendars on your desk. I don't know. Well, however you go about doing it. You know, it, whatever works for you, just make sure you're working it, as opposed to just, you know, we, you know what we do. At the beginning of every year, everybody makes that run to either Office Depot or Staples, and we get a brand new calendar. Hey, Amen. I got a, you know, we get a nice leather one, you know. Some people even get their initials on them. You know, some get the ones with the scripture on them. It's, it's very nice. But round about January 15th, or maybe we'll do it for a month, but around about February 15th, when we don't have order in our lives, we don't end up doing what we said we're going to do, and usually we end up finding that calendar up underneath a stack of stuff. You know, somewhere around August, we'll find a calendar and say, whew, I need to start using this. The year's almost over. So we start using it for another 30 days, and then by about September or October, we're all stuck again. So it's time to break that cycle. It's time to get automated, to get moving, even if you're not automated. It's time to really start getting committed to doing what we said we're going to do. Nobody's forcing us to do it. This is what we're saying we're going to do. And when we do that, we will get unstuck, we will get going, and we will get where we want to go in 2013. That's what it's all about. It's about making progress. It's not about stopping and coming, going right back around to where we've been and doing the same thing we've done. You know, you know, you know the saying that says, you know, if you uh, keep doing the same thing over and over and you expect different results, then that's insanity. And you ain't crazy. Ain't nobody crazy in here. Nobody's crazy. You're not crazy, but we do need to gain some order, though. We need to gain it. We need to get it. We need to get committed to it. And we need to get a strategy so that we can begin to really, really, we're going to do it this time. We're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. And we're going to keep doing it and diligently work our plan. Plan our work. Work our plan. A plan to fail. So we need to make sure that we are planning it out, getting it going, and then prioritize it. What are we going to do first? You know, asking to pray about it. You know, what do I need to do first? What do I need to do next? What do I need to do? What is this, how do I need to do it? And God will give us the wisdom, the spiritual understanding, and the knowledge that we need so that we can get everything done and get going and get what we, where we need to go, where we said we want to go in 2013. Now, the final step is to simply get started. We must get started. It may take a while. You know, it took me about seven months or so. But, it, you know, we need to get started. Seven areas of life broken down into seven action steps. And those seven action steps, when implemented diligently, can be accomplished within seven months. And I'm giving you a whole bunch of time. I'm giving you a bunch of time. It may take a month. You know, I got a lot of stuff going on. You know, so for me, it took me seven months. But for you, maybe you don't have as much. Maybe you've got five areas of life that you need to contend with. You know, and so maybe it'll take you four months or three months or whatever. But because I've got so much going on in my life, and it just, that's just the way God deals with me. You know, it took me about seven months. But it's interesting. Let me just give you a little, uh, let me give you some history. Let me, get, let me get jiggy with it. Let me get deep with it for a second. Uh, in Overcome Procrastination God's Way, on page 102 and 103, it says, After Joshua asked the Israelites how long they were going to be slack in taking possession of the land that was already conquered for them, he immediately began to develop a strategy to get them going. He commissioned three men from each of the slack tribes to go and describe, in other words, give an account of and divide, break down into achievable parts, the land. Also, he instructed them to bring the description and division back to him. Josephus, I, let me give you a Yale word, Josephus, who was, uh, who was an ancient Jewish historian. He suggested that it took the 21 men about seven months to achieve that task. That's you know, as, as I did a little research, I was trying to get deep with it, whatever. You know, I found that Josephus really did determine that. He did some, he, he wrote a commentary, and in that commentary, he said it took 21 men, once Joshua commissioned them to go out, it took them about seven months to, to, okay, let me just tell you where the children of Israel were. 
the children of Israel had crossed over the river Jordan. Moses had died on the other side in the wilderness, and Joshua took them across the river Jordan. And when he crossed the river Jordan, then they had to, they had to win the battle of Jericho, and they had about 30 other battles they had to win that they had to fight. And they, you know, it took about seven years for them to get beyond all of those battles. But what I want to tell you is that while they were in the, while they had crossed over the river Jordan, they had, you know, gone past the walls of Jericho and all of that, they were in the promised land. They were there. On the other side of the, on the, other side of the river Jordan is the wilderness. On this side is the promised land. And they didn't even know it yet. They were in the promised land. And then they finally arrived at this place called Shiloh. Shiloh was just, it was a gathering place. It was kind of like temporary housing, you know, that had all the tribes. It was seven tribes that didn't take full possession of the promised land. They were there but didn't even know it. Just like many of us, we're there and we don't even know it. We don't even know where, how, where God has for us to go. We are closer than we think we are. We're standing at the threshold of the promise and all we need to do is just simply take possession. And that's what was happening with the children of Israel. They were standing right in, they were in fertile ground, but they had not taken enough steps. They were all in one big place together. And that's not what God ordained. God has a specific thing for all of us, a specific thing for you, a specific possession that he wants you to possess. He wants a particular thing that he wants you to accomplish in your life. And when we just simply grab a hold of that and take the steps that we need to take in order to get where we need to go, then we will get where we need to go. And we will find out what it is in life that God has ordained for all of us. It may take us seven months to get there. It may take us a little while longer. It may take us seven years to get there. But we need to begin to take the necessary steps to get there because that is what God has. That, has, that is what he has for us. Thus, we can glean some practical wisdom and apply it to the implementation of our plan. Seven areas of life, seven action steps, broken down into seven achievable action steps that can be achieved in seven months. It should take about seven months to break old habits and establish new ones. Simultaneously, it should take the same amount of time to begin to see our paradigm shift from living presently in the past to living peacefully and progressively in the future. The process should continue as a way of life even after the seven month period. In other words, don't just get there and just turn around. Instead, get, begin to first scope out the land. It took the, seven, took the 21 uh, men that were commissioned, took them seven months to scope out the, line, the, the land to, to figure out where it was that each of the tribes was supposed to get to. He brought back the description to Joshua. Then he said, go. And then each tribe went to each place that they were supposed to go to. And they didn't just stop there. They then had to take care of They had to keep moving and keep taking possession into the place and really getting settled and really taking care of the promises and really working in and experiencing all of the promises, the land that was filled with milk and honey, and just experiencing the blessings that God had ordained for each and every one of them. And we need to do the same thing. We need to do the same thing. We can, we can, listen, we need to continue on. In fact, I am usually very productive when I follow this process, but when I do not, I am not very productive and I become more and more stressed out. The beautiful thing is, is if I miss a meeting, and, and we all need to set a meeting with ourselves, if I miss a meeting with myself or if I fall away from the process, I forgive myself, pick myself up, brush myself off, then I pick up where I left off, and you should do the same thing. The 777 plan, where we can take the seven areas of our lives, break them down into seven achievable parts, and then we can begin, just get started, take, begin getting started and taking possession of where God and what God has ordained for you. And it will, you will, it will take you about seven months to begin to see a shift from living in the past to living in the future. And when you do, when you get a hold of the future, that's when you'll really start understanding that you are now officially you can declare officially that you are unstuck, that you have gotten going, going, and that you are now getting where you want to go. Not just in 2013, but for every year uh, and every day, every moment, every second of your life. So that's what God has for us. That's what God has for you. So we need to get unstuck. In summary, get unstuck. Understand why we're stuck, which is usually a lack of order. The second thing is we need to get going, and that means we need to implement a strategy, the 777 plan, where there are seven areas of life broken down into seven achievable parts that can then be achieved in seven months. So I just want to say 
get where you want to go in 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. Just get where you want to go because that is what God has ordained for you.